Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Joe Biden says to respect the Fed. But what about the respect for gold? And what about the problem of inflation? Let's explore. <laughs> Indeed, Joe Biden had a statement today as he is meeting with the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell to discuss inflation and the problem of inflation and how to solve it. And quite interesting indeed and interesting in so much that, uh, you know, the problem of inflation first must be uh, identified and addressed as to what the source of the problem is before one can solve that problem. But let's see exactly what Joe Biden had to say about this. My plan is to address inflation. It starts with a simple proposition. Respect the Fed. Respect the Fed's independence, which I have done and will continue to do. My job as president is not to uh, nominate, highly, not only nominate highly, highly qualified individuals for that institution, but to give them the space they need to do their job. I'm not going to interfere with their critically important work. The Fed has two responsibilities. One, full employment. Two, stable prices. Chair Powell and other leaders of the Fed have noted at this moment they have a laser focus on addressing inflation, just like I am. And with a larger complement of board members now confirmed, I know we'll use those tools of monetary policy to address the rising uh, prices for the American people. So I look forward to uh, Chairman Powell's continued leadership at the Fed. And I look forward to the Senate considering my final nominee to the board, uh, Michael Barr, in the near future. So there he is. Now, he says he's laser focused on addressing inflation. But first, you have to recognize the problem of what caused inflation first. We're referencing an article here that talks a little bit about the meeting today from the Epic Times uh, and about this inflation crisis here. We'll go through this article and also um, see uh, what is missing from uh, the president's uh, information and his assessment and also from Jerome Powell's uh, um, lack of, I think, probably understanding about what the cause of inflation is or maybe even maybe they understand it. They just don't care. But we'll see here. But nonetheless, um, Joe Biden meeting with Fed Chair Jerome Powell as American households grapple with the effects of high inflation. And I also want to stop there and say that, you know, inflation is certainly out of control. However, it is not hyperinflation yet. Uh, we've not really experienced anything like that in this country and likely won't. We must be real about uh, this problem and how high it is. It's a problem. It's obviously an issue and it's very bad. And it could get a lot worse if they don't do the right things. Nonetheless, there, some of these tools that the, that the Federal Reserve has, they may be able to, I guess, mask some of the true uh, symptoms behind it, at least for now. In other words, they will kick the can down the road until they can't kick it anymore. Um, and then it's going to go over the cliff. And what that looks like, we don't know. But nonetheless, they will find something. They have a couple of things in their, quote, tool chest. And we'll talk about those here in a moment. So the uh, Fed chair, this, this is the second term, term of the Fed chair, has to be just confirmed by the Senate. And Biden will uh, talk about that in his meeting and congratulate him. The duo will discuss the state of U.S. and global economies as well as the president's top economic priority on inf of inflation the white house said uh, april and in annual inflation came in at 8.3 percent according to the bureau of labor statistics remaining close to the 40-year high of 8.5 percent in march food prices were up by 9.4 percent energy costs by 30.3 percent shelter costs by 5.1 percent and new vehicles by 13 0.2%. So you average all that stuff together, it's bad um, for sure. In fact, the official number is 8.5%. But in reality, if you measure it that the way they used to do it, it's much higher than that. Despite wages rising 5.5% in April, 
real wages registered a 2.8% decline after taking into account April inflation numbers. That's really how we should look at it. Yes, they can say wages are up, wages are up, but they don't even uh, match the cost of living, which means that real wages are down. In a Wall Street Journal op-ed published on May 30th, Joe Biden backed the Federal Reserve as the organization best suited to deal with inflation, but they're not. And likely Joe Biden didn't uh, write that piece. The Fed had raised interest rates by 50 basis points in May and indicated much more rate hikes might be incoming in future meetings as long as inflation remains elevated. And it is, and they will raise rates. The Federal Reserve has a primary responsibility to control inflation. Um, my predecessor deemed, demeaned the Fed and past presidents have sought to influence its decisions inappropriately during periods of elevated inflation. I won't do this. I have appointed highly qualified people from both parties to lead the institution, I agree with their assessment that fighting inflation is a top economic challenge right now. Well, the reason why he won't uh, interrupt or try, sing, sing to inf uh, seek to influence uh, is because he probably doesn't know how and doesn't even understand what's going on. With all due disrespect to the president, which I have no respect for him, but nonetheless, that is the case. And um, and you can't even figure out what the cause of inflation is. If you can't identify the problem that caused it, you're not going to have a solution for it. Because the president went on to blame high gas prices at the pump in large part on Russian oil and gas and refining capacity being offline. In an interview with uh, Rep Representative Bill Johnson of Ohio, he blamed the Biden administration for the current inflation situation. And this is a uh, this is Republican, but nonetheless, uh, we also cannot completely just blame the Biden administration. Yes, it really started under his watch. However, uh, much of it was from the spending and the um, money printing and the quantitative easing that began in the Trump administration. There is enough blame to go around. Likely, we would have had some inflation uh, under Trump under Trump's second term by now. Um, but it would not be as bad as it is now. Um, and likely, probably, Trump would have probably uh, been more proactive um, in implementing policies that would be uh, to ease this to ease this inflationary problem by cutting spending, hopefully in the second term, that would have been thing, and that's one of the things to do, and massive quantitative tightening, uh, almost to the point of austerity. It's the only way to really stop it, as well as raising rates, but nonetheless, you do a couple of different things and unleash uh, the private sector. Uh, you get the economy going again and uh, you uh, help to ease the uh, supply chain issues. Uh, then I think that we could have pulled ourselves back from the brink. Uh, this uh, modern monetary theorism and the people behind these Keynesian policies, they're exacerbating the issue and not doing anything to mitigate it and and that is a real problem. The first reason for inflation is the high gas prices, which Johnson claims is mostly due to Washington's policies that have eroded the energy independence of America. And But he's wrong. He's got it absolutely wrong there. The first reason for inflation is not high gas prices. It is the Federal Reserve printing money. It is this easy monetary policies that have, have caused this and Keynesian modern monetary theorism and running amok in Washington. Now, high gas prices are certainly a big problem and that's exacerbating it, but nonetheless, we would have had higher gas prices um, even if we had full energy independence here and we were net exporters. We would have still had higher gas prices. Um, I don't think it would be nearly as bad as they are now, but we would have seen it, but obviously, uh, there's a lot of different factors that play that uh, play a role here, and uh, and inflation is a multi-pronged event uh, that we're seeing. Uh, but the first reason is not high gas prices; it is money printing. It is the M2 money supply. Forty percent of the entire M2 money supply has been created in the last two years. Let that sink in, folks. This is not in this uh, article either. And this is an article from the Epic Times, which has a major contributor from the Associated Press. 
uh, which the Associated Press is part of the mainstream media that uh, ignores the true reasons for things occurring. And uh, inflation is something that's got to be tackled uh, head on and by identifying the problem and identifying the solution. Then he goes on to say the second reason is a massive amount of money that the Biden administration has spent put into the system. Well, that's true. You're right. Very, very true. But we cannot put all the blame on the Biden administration. Uh, we can put a lot of it there because they just want to spend to infinity on every and every single thing. But the Trump administration played its role as well as all of Congress at the time and the Republicans. However, uh, during the time of the big spending that we had under COVID, uh, those bills, um, uh, you know, it was we were kind of had our hands tied because we really didn't know what we were dealing with at the time. In retrospect, uh, understanding the virus more now that we as we do now than we did then, we probably should not have shut down, which would uh, precipitated and uh, the sp big spending because people were forced out of work. Essentially, businesses were forced to close down, so the government felt obligated to step in, and of course. No matter what the reason is, as as um, noble as a cause as anything is that the government does, somebody's got to pay for it. Somehow, somehow, some way. Inflation is one of those ways. It's a hidden tax. And it's a hidden tax because every time you give money out, for whatever reason, uh, somebody's got to pay for it. Even if you don't raise taxes, the dilution of the money supply is going to um, come come together into fruition with this problem. Uh, so there that is. What is the answer to this? It's gold, folks. Gold is a way to preserve your wealth against an inflated dollar. And that's why these gold coins are here, minted by the United States government all around. But they are indeed wealth preservation devices and they will continue to act as such. And even though today, as I record this video, the price is down for gold, um, that's okay. Um, it's got it's got a ways to go, and it will reflect itself in due nature because the dollar index is strong against an inflated dollar. Uh, but the um, but one thing is for sure: in the end, and through the long course of time, gold uh, holds its value, and it really it's it's doing okay, all things considered, um, when you take into account the measure of time um, against the dollar. The dollar we know will go down even by their own target of the Federal Reserve of 2% or 2.5%. Uh, it is destined to fall even more year over year, month over month. Gold fluctuates in price, but its value is maintained throughout the course of time and history. Day-to-day um, -day movements, month-to-month -month movements because of the dollar index, rising bond yields will continue to play a role in its price fluctuations day-to-day. And depending on when you get in to gold um, and when you exit as gold, exit gold, that is the matter. If it's a, it's a, it is a, it is a, an exercise in patience and persistence when you do hold gold. Uh, but it has proven itself over the course of thousands of years, and it shall continue no matter what the Fed does, no matter what the president says or doesn't say, no matter what party we're affiliated with. We know that sound money is the best money. Hope you found this video insightful. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.